This is Hit Publish, the first podcast dedicated to uncovering heroic businesses secretly navigating the ever-changing digital landscape. Each episode, we'll play host to leaders in their fields discussing their adoption of the latest digital trends and related technologies, addressing the total effects on the way we market businesses and brands across all of our industries. And occasionally, we'll pay homage to the technology giants who dictate our online lives and the platforms they provide reminding ourselves of the self-inflicted and inevitable misuse of personal data. So if this all sounds good to you, skip the terms and conditions, ignore the privacy policy, and hit subscribe. On this episode of Hit Publish. As a consumer, we're all spending close to two hours a day on a channel that didn't exist 14 years ago, and that has fundamentally rewritten the rules of business. I believe that organic social is slipping off if all you do is post. The way that consumers are communicating changes the rules of business. And if you can be agile and adapt, then your business does better. We sat down with Polly Barnfield of Maybe Tech, a social listening tool that helps brands benchmark and improve their social media performance and uniquely compare results against brand competitors. We talked to Polly about how Maybe differs from any other social listening tools out there, including measuring feeling and the rules of engagement. We also talked about the digital index and what good and bad social looks like for large and small brands. Here we are, back for another episode of Hit Publish. Hi, Chris. Greetings. We should say that we're a man down today, aren't we? Um, yep. Sam, part-time layabout, isn't joining us today. He's, he's got better things to do than uh, <laughs> stand in a hot room and, and talk to us. Yeah. Um, we're joined by Polly Barnfield from Maybe. Hi, Polly. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for, for joining us today. I'm excited to talk about Maybe. I had a good look at, into it last night and uh, had a browse around. I didn't sign up to it, though, because I didn't want you to think I was just there to to poke around, which I would have been, really, to be honest. I'm uh, disappointed. That's another non-conversion. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I've just messed up all your analytics now. So um, No, but I, I certainly will do after this conversation once I've found out more and learned more about it, which is the purpose of today's podcast. So, yeah, th- thanks again for joining so let's jump straight into it um, and let's talk about maybe tech so how is the uh, maybe platform different from other listening tools to the likes of um, sprout social which we use for example or more dedicated platforms like a wario how's it different oh great question so um, number one maybe is a, a social um, engagement platform that's been built 14 years after social media was a thing so uh, a lot of platforms have developed from a premise of sh- schedule first and then had other things added to them. Whereas maybe it's very much, may- maybe it doesn't do scheduling. It integrates with other platforms. Um, at the moment, Buffer, but we're building out APIs that integrate with all other scheduling platforms. Um, it's much more about thinking about the conversation that already exists. You know, we all focus on um, publishing, what posts you're pushing out. But, you know, over the last two years, more content has been created than ever before. And actually what matters most is what how are people engaging with that content. So we're very much a listen first and enable engagement um, and an understand those metrics. Um, and the key part that really sets us apart from other platforms is that we have an index that enables us to index any industry vertical to say, how do you perform compared to your peers? You mentioned Buffer just a moment ago, which I'm interested to hear because we use that religiously and it obviously has its own low-key sort of analytics tools within it. How, what, how are you integrating with them and what, in what way are you using them to talk to the Maybe platform? Uh, so we have a Zapier integration, which means that we can integrate with any, any number of platforms. Um, and the first integrations we've built with Zapier is about being able to pull data out of our platform, push it into other places. Okay. Um, I would implore you to sign up and find out more. I would say that, <laughs> wouldn't I? Um, but we believe that we, you know, look, social, I think, is, is misunderstood as a business tool. Um, as a consumer, we're all spending close to two hours a day on a channel that didn't exist 14 years ago. And that has fundamentally rewritten the rules of business. Now, social platforms like Social Sprout and Buffer and Hootsuite are all amazing. They're all fantastic. But we take a very different view of the conversation and how you can engage with it. So one of the metrics for us is how much content are you engaging with from other people? Because it's not just about what you say. It's about how you engage with other people's content and how many people are talking about your brand and what are they saying? Um, and are you responding to it? Because social has gone way beyond just what you publish. I'm interested to understand how maybe measures performance because each sort of listening tool has its own way of measuring what's good and what isn't, and et cetera. So how does, how does maybe handle 
or measure, sorry, performance uh, across the social channels um, and what does maybe consider a well-performing channel? Um, now, again, I would think of, I, I think we think about this slightly differently, which is that obviously um, a good performing channel is one that's engaging well and creating positive sentiment. But fundamentally, it's actually what is delivering the business results. So what do you want social to deliver for your business? And so is it footfall? Is it sales? Are those online or offline sales? And therefore, what are the KPIs that social needs to drive? Because we don't live in a single channel world in work anymore. We live in a, in a very joined up experience from a consumer perspective. And so but maybe it's about providing businesses with a set of tools that makes that conversational journey that a customer is on much clearer, not just to the agency, but to the business as a whole. So how do you provide the tools to see what a customer, the journey a customer is going as they're deciding to buy your product or engage with your business? And so for us, it's not as binary as what is good. It's is it fundamentally delivering a business result? Because it's not. That's what bad looks like. Good sure. looks like your biz business achieving the results and the sentiment and the volume of engagement that the consumer is having with you through your social channels. And how does it, how does um, maybe sort of work that? I um, sort of look at the, the impact that each, um, you know, post can have or, you know, that sort of, uh, I can't remember what you call it in the platform, but that engagement um, and the influence that, that each post can have. That's a great question. So we um, take the data um, from a range of APIs, um, both um, native APIs if you've signed in through the platform, but if you want to compare your performance to other businesses, then those are APIs that we are in effect paying for through directly from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and we pass them through machine learning and AI to give a various, various different views. So our fundamental reports are um, how are people engaging with your content or your peers' content? And that's both around your conversation of what you are publishing, but also what's being said about you. Um, we look at what, what are the keywords within that conversation? So what are the themes that are creating that engagement? What is the sentiment around it? And then the key piece that I find that I think is really interesting is we're then breaking that conversation down into how have people responded to your posts? Okay. How are you engaging with other people's posts? And how are people engaging with your brand? And surfacing that in a way that is really easy for anybody within an organisation to respond to, because it's not just necessarily about an agency responding, but actually it could be, you know, if you're a retailer, for example, it could be that merchandising need to understand that whatever the discussion on social is, the fact that the sleeves are too short on your shirts or mm -hmm. that your opening hours are wrong. So it's making the conversation on social a much broader business tool that can then be assigned to somebody else in the organisation. So the, the maybe platform is... Um, it was seat agnostic. We don't mind whether you are uh, have one, one team member in the platform or 100 people in the platform. We want everybody in your organisation to understand what your customer is saying on social. And so it's about them being able to assign those posts and say, hang on, there's a big conversation about, I don't know, your shopping centre and the loo's you know, up to scratch because that's something that will actually affect your business results. So it's taking social beyond just being a marketing tool and actually being something that's intrinsic to the way you run your business. Is it more aimed towards... Um business owners as opposed to agencies or is it is it for both actually oh we're very happy for you to be a client in um, <laughs> <laughs> um we um i think that um we we but we work work with both so we have clients that are agencies mm -hmm. um but when with the agency clients is about making sure that their businesses are part of that 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 platform too so from a reporting perspective for example rather than agencies creating reports for clients and we know that obviously sprout create great reports but I, our reports look at a different set of KPIs mm. um, and also their living KPIs, which is how does the customer feel today? And is that something that really should only be monthly or isn't it something that the, 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 the business owner should see today? So That's interesting, actually. I was having a look around on, on uh, the website and, yeah, there was, there was talk about measuring feeling mm. um, and there's not on a good number of platforms out there that do that. So I'm interested to know how you measure that. Oh, you want my secret sauce? Yeah. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Cheeky. Um, so um, that's where artificial intelligence comes in. Um, and look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let AI drive my car, but it's, it does make marketing um, a bit, it makes it smarter. So we are just looking at the, at, at the words and assigning emotion to that. If you're running okay. Breaking Bad, for example, in your shopping centre or at a cinema, then your sentiment will be really, really, really bad. Um, and you tell it that actually in this instance that sentiment, that, that um, bad is a good word and that's okay. Um, but fundamentally, it lets you make smarter decisions faster.
Um, Does it look at um, likes and dislikes and emojis that are used to reflect that feeling? Uh, so we're testing emojis at the moment. We've done a lot, of, lot, a lot with image recognition, but um, yeah, we, we, we have, so in beta, we have a number of things we're testing, but what we have live today is just natural language. That's really good. It's quite impressive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he is going to sign up today by the end of this. <laughs> oh, you bet. I'm not, quitting. I'm not quitting till he does. <laughs> you mentioned, Polly, you mentioned earlier about the digital index. Um, yep. And, and I, I'm someone that has used the platform. Um, and so I'm, Thanks, I Chris. enjoy seeing that. I know. Um, I'll buy so, you a beer. But can you explain um, yeah, what, that, what that is and how that works? Um, so the index for us is um, it's where we have a patent. Um, it came out of a project that we started around the high streets, which is all about how do you demonstrate to business owners that social matters. Um, and so we believe the best way to do that is by letting people compare their, their social performance compared to their peers. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can see, well, hang on a minute, that business that's doing really well on social actually is also doing really well. We know they're training really well. Um, you start to understand the value of social. So we've done a lot in the retail and the high street space. And it's fascinating when you start to look at businesses like Primark, Bin and Bargains, Greggs, who don't, don't trade online, they trade offline. Mm. They're absolutely smashing it on social. They're at right. the top of the index. Yeah. But if you then go and look at businesses like, um, might get sued. Should we, go, should we risk it? Um, <laughs> there are businesses, for example, like um, big, big, big household names, River Island, Topshop, Superdrive, who, you know, they're doing a good job, but they're not by any means ringing the bell um, in the same way. Um, and they're not engaging the conversation. Greg, Greg's launched a sausage roll that has changed their balance sheet. Yeah. Because they understood the conversation on social. Um, and it's that whole piece that actually fundamentally the way that consumers are communicating changes the rules of business. And if you can be agile and adapt, then your business does better. And it doesn't matter whether you're an SME, one-man one man band SME, or whether you're a PLC. Ignore the customer at your peril right now. Because not only does the customer is voting on their feet, but the customer now is a publisher too. So if you're not listening collectively to what your customers are saying and responding pretty fast... Scores You're missing a trick. Score, scores are mm. on the doors. Mm. Why, um, why do you think bigger brands aren't as hot as the, the likes of brands that are offline? Do you think there's a specific reason for that? Uh, uh, good question. So we, we, did a, we did a piece of benchmarking around that. So um, having, having looked at the, the Primark and B&M piece, we then went on and looked at um, Boohoo, um, Gymshark, and no, what's the other one we looked at alongside? I think t both of those brands you just mentioned there are clients of social chain. So you would suspect that their their social would be on point. <laughs> so their social is on point. What's really interesting about it is that it's not only on point in it's. What's it, if you take if you take Boohoo and um, Gymshark, hmm. they post a lot, so they've got great content, which is what social chain are really good at doing. Um, they also engage a lot, so they're very good. They've obviously invested heavily in internal teams to engage, or whether they're doing it through an agency, I don't know. Um, but they're engaging very heavily with external content, mm -hmm. and that's creating a subsequently very large conversation about their brands. If you then go and look at, for example, Topshop and Superdrive, they're posting significantly less content. Um, and when you take, for example, Topshop, which is a straight competitor of Boohoo, right? If I'm, mm -hmm. a, if I'm a teenager, I had to choose between those two. I'm not going to buy a dress from one or the other. Yeah. But Boohoo are doing a great job of making sure you're in my face right. and they're engaging with me. When I say, and when I, when I say I'm worried about your sustainability, Boohoo, Boohoo launched a sustainable fashion brand. Brilliant. But Topshop just isn't, the volume, volume is lower. Uh, their engagement's actually really good. So you can see if, if they actually did turn up their volume, then they'd have a chance of competing. But they're not, and they're not engaging. They're not engaging the same way. Okay. Um, I'm interested to understand the actions side of the platform um, and how how you decide what the right action is to take. What is it? What measurements do you use? And when do you decide, right, well, this isn't working out so great, so do this, assuming that's what an action is? Um, so we have recently renamed that platform Activities. Okay. Um, and the premise behind it is that um, as the person or the team within an organisation that's, that's told, you know, this is your thing, you're doing the social, beyond posting, we believe that the engagement is the other key metric. So the activities part of the platform is about showing you the content from those organisations that or, or people that are important to you. So going back to that point of what content do you engage with, what the platform does is surfaces 
over and, and the, fir the first view you see is all the data in the last 24 hours. So it shows you the, the data over the last 24 hours that has been most engaged with that you should engage with. So when you set up the platform um, for a brand or a business, you say, well, what are the conversations I'd like to be involved with? So let's say you're a ladies fashion brand or a teenager's fashion brand. What are the conversations that my customer is already hanging out in? Do I want to be involved in the Glastonbury conversation, for example? Do I want to be, you know, what are the conversations? What is that content that's already put out there that's been published where my customer will be and where do I want to engage with it organically? And we then surface the conversations that are most are being most engaged with over the last 24 hours. So it makes it really quick and really easy to engage with it across Twitter, Facebook and Instagram from one dashboard. How does maybe decide who your customer is? Is it based on followers and, and likes, etc. that you already have? Well, that's a good question. Um, so right now, um, we and what's live on the platform right now is you choose. So you choose, okay. you choose who you want to put in. Um, we are testing um, interesting new features that will make robust suggestions to you. Um, okay. And uh, if you were in the platform, you'll get them first. And is that yeah. sort of a s similar in the way that uh, Facebook Ads Manager might say, you know, this demographic at this age range and <clears throat> this location and, and so on? Is it deeper than that? So um, there are two sides to this. Um, so we haven't talked about the Ads Manager piece yet. So we have, uh, so let me jump about for a minute. So as well as the organic piece, we have um, um, an Ads Manager. Mm -hmm that ranks your ads based upon their, their ROAS. So you can start to see what, what takes you about five clicks to do on Facebook Ads Manager. You can see in one view or maybe. Um, and we are um, testing um, pieces around custom audience that we're looking at blending with your okay. piece as well. So. I have to sign up, Chris. It's I'm <laughs> sorry, yeah, you will. It's, it's getting interesting. It's getting it's getting interesting. interesting. <laughs> you, you mentioned actually a moment ago. So how, how does, or if it does at all, how does maybe measure uh, ROI, return on investment, how does it measure or does it, it not? It, it depends what your, so, so it comes back to this whole piece of um, what, what your goals what, what, what does good look like? Yeah, yeah. So, so from a return on, uh, on advertising spend, obviously from paid, paid social, that's simple. Mm. Um, we tell you, we will suggest you, you should tell, what frustrates, the, 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 what frustrates us with paid social is we see so many clients that have actually turned off campaigns they should have set left running because the return on ad spend was extremely good, but they haven't realised that they just said, well, the budget was the budget, so we turned it off. But they let bad ads stay running because they're not spending them fast enough. Actually, the return on ad spend is really bad. So we're sort of promoting the idea that if you can understand your return on advertising spend, then let the good ones run and kill the bad ones. Um, so that's return on investment number one. Number two is you know how is it actually impacting the the, the physical goal or the you know the, the sales goal of the business because that's all that matters, right? It's bottom line. Yeah, indeed. Um, we had a, uh, a guest on uh, a couple of weeks ago, Georgie from Simply Social, um, and her niche is social media channel management, but on the organic side of things. Um, and our, or not argument, but our, our discussion was around the fact that organic is slipping off, organic social is, is slipping off, and, and that sort of free engagement is happening less and less. Um, and I think it's only LinkedIn right now that's sort of given it away um, for nothing. But I'm sure that will change at some point. Does that sort of affect a listening tool like maybe and is the future more in the ads side of things or the the, the analytics of the ad side of things um so i'm gonna i'm gonna say something really radical which is that i believe that organic social is slipping off if all you do is post mm -hmm. if okay. actually you engage with other people's content that's an entirely different thing so yes the the model of, of posting organic content and thinking that will do the job is dead the, the model of, I agree, LinkedIn's doing extremely well right now, but I can't imagine that will last forever. Mm. But actually, you know, let's, look, let's think of this as a, a new channel that we all use as human beings. And therefore, if content's being put out there and you respond to it, that's the best feel, feeling in the world, right? Mm. So if, you're, if, you are, if you invest human capital, let's take retail, for example. They've all got a dearth of staff stood in stores, possibly not as busy as they should be. If they were actually engaging with their staff through social, their, their, their consumers through social, what would their results look like? Mm -hmm. Look at Lush as an example. Look at Hobbycraft. They're enabling that. And look at their bottom line. Local social, local teams running the social, spending many more people running the social, and their bottom line's good. So I'm not saying organic is organic's changing, but I think it's changing to a business tool that's got to be used. So maybe it's about providing these tools that means you can enable, you can empower, and enable and measure. Because if you measure it, you can track it, and then you can improve it. But with paid social. The other thing that that is fascinating is we see many cases where paid social is generating massive engagement mm. that's going unanswered. 
because you don't see those comments. They don't appear organically. So one key thing that maybe does is enable you to see the comments that are coming on paid content, because mm -hmm. that's nuts. So a, a brand is happy to pay to get engagement on a post. That goes out in a report, and everybody does says high five, brilliant, you've got that engagement. But what nobody seems to measure or understand is the fact that 200 people left a comment about the dress that you advertised, and nobody responded. Now, if that happened in the store, mm. somebody would get fired. <laughs> but on social, because it's invisible, nobody seems to mind. And that's, that, that's what's wrong with social at the moment, is it's so misunderstood as a business channel. So do you see sort of the future of it being that literally the store workers that are stacking shelves or hanging up new clothing or whatever, they're also actively engaging from their smartphone or whatever while they're in, in store as a collective lead managing that channel? I could possibly redefine every brand social channel because I'll get shot. <laughs> I would suggest trying to control social as a brand channel that only lives in one department in an organisation when you've got multiple people speaking to your customer is possibly um, not embracing the channel in the way it was designed to be used. And I think look at those that are doing it differently and look at the results they're achieving um, and you have your answer. And I think those those channels, like I said, that are, that are doing it well in, in um, your view from what you can see, it's it's kind of big brands talking but on that local level. So they're yeah, not just a brand spitting out content, it's kind of the local branch um, driving people to go to that store. Absolutely, Chris. If your if your if your social was run nationally yeah. for your business, how would it work for you? Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't do a lot, would it? Sort of thing. Really, no. It's it's not in, it's not warming to the local people by so our you, business. You've just answered your own question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess that, um, like I said, in, in answering that, um, Polly, is that how you kind of see the future of the high street in a way? Really, just in terms of social, anyway, those brands locally engaging with their audiences. Is that? Um, look, I think let, let's be frank. Consumers, consumers now have the ball and have run off the pitch with it. They are they are in charge. It is your marketing. You know, it's, the, it's the channel of one, um, and those brands that find a way to connect and resonate with with consumers will do better. It doesn't matter whether you're digital or physical. You've got to connect and and have the conversation. The channel the customer is in. Um, so, and the writing's on the wall for those those brands that are doing it well are performing better but the rules will change because social is such a fast moving pace it didn't Absolutely. exist 14 years ago um but it is transforming the way business is done and on the leading on from that um exactly as you say it's changing quickly and one of the later sort of innovations with social is this sort of social commerce really so selling directly through facebook and instagram etc how does how does that can the maybe platform handle that is that is that work well? For well I think that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> it all comes down to service, doesn't it? And that's all about understanding what customers are saying and being able to respond appropriately and efficiently at the right time. Um, look, there are many tools out there. Um, we, we, our, our vision and mission is all about enabling every business, regardless of size, to have access to uh, AI-powered tools that enable them to respond efficiently to their customers. We want to be the indispensable business tool that every business needs to serve their customers well. So yeah, you bet I love it. I, uh, we, we had this discussion briefly in a previous episode and interested to get your thoughts. Where do you think that leaves websites for smaller businesses and startups when we know that Instagram is testing uh, one tap click purchases um, in, the, in the US right now? Facebook is playing with Facebook market that will no doubt evolve into something similar. Where do you think that leaves a, a typical e-commerce website for a smaller business? Is it social first and let's start selling through there and then we'll look at a website later or is website still a fundamental piece to that, part, that puzzle? Uh, let me tell you, let me give you a little case study. So we've got um, a retailer that we work with who sells really high-end boots, uh, shoes. Um, um, she, two years ago, really wasn't doing an awful lot online at all and wasn't on social. Um, and she started running some tests. Um, she sells high-end product um, and she didn't believe that people buy it through a website. Um, she has got extraordinarily good at Instagram um, and she has, a, has a created a great website. And she last year spent £14,000 worth, uh, £14,000 on Instagram ads and she sold £145,000 worth of boots. Um, she sees um, Instagram as a key part of her business. It's not the only part of her business, but I don't think, I mean, she, she's an example of somebody sending high end product. She sells trainers for 150 quid a pop, boots for 200, 300 quid a pop more. You wouldn't buy those. Unless you could check it out on the website, um, mm -hmm. you you know I think we're we're, we're as, as human beings we're getting more and more cautious with and this, savvy with, and to, savvy. Yeah. So I think you've you've still got to pass the smell test, right? But you've got to be really good at grabbing me. Um, her she, she she's done extraordinarily well. Um, 
through retargeting. She's understood that once I've got your attention, she has beautiful photography, she's used um, um, our platform to understand what people are talking about. Let's reveal new product lines. She didn't understand our customers talked about trainers. She added trainers to a product line. She's selling more. She's selling more to the same customers. Um, and she's got really good at retargeting because you don't just make that purchase immediate, immediately. You think about it, you know, it's, it's something that... What about as a startup, if I've got X amount of budget, do I bother building a website or do I go straight onto Instagram and start selling my product? I test it. Depends what you're selling. Depends on the price point. Depends on your customer base. And test it. There is nothing, nothing beats testing. And listen. We're running out of time. I'm conscious that uh, you, you've got to shoot off for a, a, a call to India. To, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure tech. it's all good. Yeah. More tech. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Look, a, a shameless plug. In a few short sentences, tell us what maybe can do, how we get onto it, and how we find it, and that kind of thing. Go. So, number one, um, there's a completely um, free tier of maybe that anybody can sign up up to, regardless of size. After 30 days, um, you are charged based upon the size of your social following, um, and it is remarkably good value. Um, if you want to know how your customers feel, what they're talking about, and how you compare to your nearest competitor, then give it a go. What's going to lose? Um, I think you'll learn an awful lot. Um, and um, we'd be excited to look after you. One of the key things, um, um, we guarantee a 30, round, 30 minute response to um, questions, um, and we're here to help people sell more product. Great stuff. Customers better. The, the links will be in the, in the notes, but um, your, your website address, Polly? Is maybetech.com. Perfect. Stuff. Thanks, Polly, thanks for joining us. Um, it's short and sweet, we'd love to have you back um, again soon, if that's okay, and uh, yeah, th thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, leave us a comment or review on Apple Podcasts as it really helps us to bring you new episodes regularly. If you've got something to say around digital marketing and would like to feature on a future podcast, please do get in touch in any of the usual ways. You've been listening to Hit Publish with me, Chris. And me, Ian. 